The clanging symphony of the Pittsburgh steel mills echoed through the soot-choked air, a relentless rhythm that mirrored the pounding hearts of the immigrant workers. Whispers, carried on the sting of coal smoke, spoke of a different kind of power at work a legend whispered in hushed tones, a name that sent shivers down spines Joe Magarak. He wasn't born of flesh and blood, but of the very essence of the mills themselves. Legends claimed he emerged from the fiery heart of Iron Mountain, a colossal figure sculpted by the Inferno's breath. Steel, not blood, coursed through his veins, his skin shimmering with the dull sheen of molten iron. The first whispers of his existence came in the form of impossibly forged ingots train tracks twisted into perfect spirals overnight, sheets of steel as thin as lace yet stronger than any known alloy. Fear mingled with awe as tales of Joe's feet spread like wildfire. They said he toiled tirelessly, his bare hands wielding molten metal with the ease of a baker kneading dough. His strength dwarfed even the most powerful hydraulic press, his movements blurring with inhuman speed. Yet, he remained an enigma, a solitary titan cloaked in the perpetual twilight of the mills, a silhouette glimpsed against the fiery glow of the furnaces, a deep, rhythmic clang echoing from the shadows. Then came the day despair choked the life out of the city. The tyrannical owner, Frederick Thompson, a man whose greed burned hotter than any furnace, announced the closure of the mills. Hundreds of families, their livelihoods built on the rhythmic beat of the hammers, faced a future as bleak as the soot-caked sky. Panic, cold and suffocating, gripped the hearts of the workers. But then, a glimmer of hope emerged. Old man Mestrovic, his weathered face etched with the trials of a long life in the mills, stepped forward with a desperate gamble. He offered his daughter, Mary, the most beautiful woman in Pittsburgh, as a prize not to the richest man, but to the strongest. A hush fell over the gathered workers. This was a desperate gamble, a chance to appease the capricious Thompson. One by one, the burliest men stepped forward, their muscles straining against impossible weights, their faces contorted in exertion. Each failed, their attempts met with groans of disappointment. Despair threatened to engulf them once more. Suddenly, a deep voice, like the rumble of an approaching storm, resonated from the shadows. A colossal figure emerged from the smoke and steam, its silhouette etched against the furnace's fiery heart. It was Joe Magarek. The workers held their breath as Joe effortlessly lifted Mestrovic's challenge a behemoth of a steel beam that would have crushed any ordinary man. He held it aloft with one hand, his face an impassive mask beneath the flickering furnace light. A roar of triumph erupted from the crowd, a surge of hope washing over them like a tidal wave. Mary, however, felt a flicker of unease cross her heart as she gazed upon the silent, steel giant. Her intuition, honed in the harsh realities of mill life, sensed something amiss. Thompson, on the other hand, was ecstatic. Here was a spectacle, a worker with superhuman strength who could single-handedly keep the mills running and line his pockets with even more ill-gotten gains. He readily agreed to Mestrovic's proposition. But on the eve of the wedding, a chilling realization dawned upon the workers. Joe Magarak vanished. The nights of impossibly forged steel became a memory, replaced by the oppressive silence that preceded the announcement of the mill closure. Hope, once rekindled, flickered and died, replaced by a gnawing fear. Then, a rumor, sharp and swift as a pickaxe blow, cleaved through the despair hanging heavy in the air. A young worker claimed to have seen Thompson entering the Bessemer converter, the monstrous furnace that transformed raw iron into molten steel. Panic surged through the workers like a tidal wave. The Bessemer converter was a metal maw, its fiery heart capable of melting anything whole. With a desperate gamble fueled by raw terror, the workers stormed the mills. They found Thompson, his face pale and sweat slicked, standing before the converter, its massive lid hanging precariously ajar. Inside, a single, glowing ingot pulsed with an unnatural heat. It was the finest steel they had ever seen, but it held a faint, familiar silhouette, the unmistakable form of a man. Joe Magarak, the titan of steel, had sacrificed himself in the fiery heart of the converter to ensure the survival of his fellow workers. He had become part of the very metal that fueled their city, a tragic hero forever etched in the soul of the Pittsburgh mills. 
The news spread like wildfire, igniting a fury within the hearts of the workers. Thompson, ostracized and shunned, was forced to reopen the mills roared back to life, fueled not just by coal and iron ore, but by the memory of Joe Magarak. The workers, united in their grief and resolve, channeled their sorrow into their labor. Each clang of the hammer, each hiss of steam, became a tribute to their fallen comrade. Mary, heartbroken yet resolute, refused any compensation from Thompson. Instead, she used her inheritance to establish a clinic for the workers and their families, a haven where the scars of the mills could be healed. The clinic became a symbol of Joe's legacy, a testament to the strength and compassion that resided within the hearts of steelworkers. But the legend of Joe Magarak didn't end there. Whispers began circulating of strange occurrences in the mills. On nights with a full moon, some swore they saw a flicker of movement in the shadows, a silhouette that resembled the steel giant. Tools went missing, only to reappear perfectly sharpened and balanced. The most incredible stories spoke of seemingly impossible feats a malfunctioning crane miraculously righted itself, a vat of molten steel cooling just before spilling over. These events fueled speculation. Some believed Joe's spirit remained, a guardian angel watching over the workers. Others scoffed, attributing the occurrences to fatigue and overactive imaginations. But deep down, even the skeptics felt a prickle of unease. One particularly brutal winter, a blizzard raged, threatening to cripple the city and shut down the mills once more. Coal deliveries became impossible, and the furnaces sputtered, on the verge of extinction. Despair threatened to grip the workers again. Then, on the coldest night of the storm, a miracle occurred. The furnaces roared back to life, burning hotter than ever before. The workers, rushing to investigate, found no explanation. And, but a single, colossal footprint, etched deep into the frozen ground outside the mill, hinted at a nocturnal visitor. News of the event solidified Joe Magarak's status as a legend. He became more than just a symbol of strength and sacrifice, he became a guardian a silent protector who watched over the mills and its workers. The legend of Joe Magarak continues to echo through the halls of the Pittsburgh Steel Mills, a reminder of the power of human spirit, the unwavering strength of camaraderie, and the enduring legacy of a man who became one with steel.